Well, as you can see, this is a very big book, Providence, over 700 pages. So you should ask me, don't you know people don't read 700 page books? <laughs> Yes, I do know that. And so you should ask next, so why did you write a 700-page book? And here are two answers. One is that a few people read 700-page books, and they tend to be the people who influence other people. And the second reason is, even though somebody may not choose to read through this cover to cover, they will be a lover of the Bible, a lover of the sovereign rule of God over all things, and they would love to have a big, fat book on their shelf that's got a really good index and a really good table of contents so that they can go to it anytime they want and find help regarding a particular text. So it becomes a resource kind of book, not just a book that you'd read from cover to cover. So it's about providence. Now, maybe you'd ask me another question. Why didn't you call it the sovereignty of God? I mean, didn't we hear you say for years you wanted to write a book called Sightings of the Sovereignty of God? That's the title I was working with for 20 years for this book. So why didn't you write that? I did write that. But the reason I call it providence is because as I got into it, I realized I've got to write not just about the fact that God is sovereign, that is, he has the authority and the right and the power to do whatever he pleases, and he does. But you have to deal with, well, why does he do what he does? Where is it all going? And once you talk about purposeful sovereignty, that's what this is. This is about the sovereignty of God and where it's all going. And that's what I mean by providence, purposeful sovereignty. So here's, here's why I wrote the book. Here's what difference I think it will make in your life if you were to get into this. I'll just mention several reasons out of 10 that I closed the book with. Number one, I want there to be God-besotted people in the world. I want them to live in a God-entranced world. And I don't know a doctrine better than the providence of God to make people God-besotted in a God-entranced world because the providence of God means he guides the courses of the stars and has them all named, all billions of them, and he causes the little birds to fall out of trees in the darkest jungle of the Amazon. And so from the tiniest, meticulous parts of the universe to the grand parts of the universe, he rules. And if you believe that, if that grips you, you'll look at everything differently. You'll be a God-besotted person. That's number one. I want there to be God-besotted people in a God-entranced world. Number two, I want you to have assurance of your salvation. It says in Ephesians 1, uh, in him we have obtained an inheritance according to his purpose who works all things together according to the counsel of his will. So works all things according to the counsel of his will is providence. But notice, it's connected to we have an inheritance. So the point is you can be sure you're going to make it to your inheritance because God is a God of absolute, all-pervasive Providence. It's not just a random theoretical doctrine. It's very, very personal in the way Paul presents it. Third, suffering. In my life, in my teaching, in my experience, no doctrine comes close to providing the stability underneath your feet when the worst things happen to you. Nothing is better than to know you meant it for evil, Satan. God meant it for good. I mean, Genesis 50 verse 20 is like a banner flying over every bad thing that happens to Christians. You meant it for evil. And the you might be persecutors. 
The you might be your own sinfulness. The you might be the devil. It's true. They meant it for evil. God, in his providence, meant it for good. Therefore, there's a rock under your feet. You never have to say, where was God when this happened? And the last thing I would say is courage and authority to pursue the nations. You remember what Jesus said? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go make disciples. If you believe that God has all pervasive, all embracing authority, right, power over all nations, you'll take that command with joyful seriousness. I think this book is a book about missions as it is a book about everything because God's providence is all pervasive. So for those four reasons at least, I hope and I pray that you will find help in this book.